What's cracking, everybody? Zerfell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the strongest cores. If not, honestly, it's the strongest core. Let's be honest. Skarmory Whiskash has now cemented itself as the top meta core in the Open Great League as far as coverage and consistency goes. Uh, unfortunately, it also is a bit RPS, which means if you catch the bad matchup, if you can't flip switch, then your Skarmory might be stuck on a Lantern or your Whiskash might be stuck on a Superior. So bad times all around if that's the case. But when this team isn't hit with a hard counter it absolutely shreds and we got shadow dragonair in the back to provide a solid safe swap with the dragon pulse might i add to get some unexpected booms so let's take a look at this game uh, these games get into the battles here and check this team out i know i've done videos on pretty much all three of these pokemon already but i just this team went off for me on my last stream and i really wanted to showcase it because it's really it really comes down to whiskash skarmory and dragonair just being so strong together um, so Whiskash, obviously we know it got Scald this season, Scald itself got a buff and has a 50% chance to debuff the opponent's attack. So that honestly, in my opinion, makes it better than Swampert. Now, uh, as far as some, uh, suggestions for replacements on the team, Whiscash you could replace with Swampert, Quagsire, pretty much anything here that is a mud boy. Skarmory you could replace with Talonflame, Mandibuzz, any strong flyer, and then Shadow Dragonair. Honestly, I feel like it really is one of the best things that does what it does because it really breaks apart things like Talonflame Lantern cores and even other Mud Boys like Whiskash and Superior, things like that. So we're going to be getting a straight win off of that one, getting into the next game. That was just... That was just Shadow Dragonair putting in all the work because it's just, it's so strong. It just, if it can win you switch in these bad matchup situations, then you're chilling. So I'm going to come in here with my Skarmory and I'm going to look to hard counter this Altaria. I figure if I can get this thing on the Altaria, that means that I'm going to be able to keep it away from that Lantern and the opponent. Also knowing that they probably need to get switch advantage, they may look to put their shields up here, which they actually do um, because they want to get switch and keep their Lantern away from the Whiskash. However, for me, I do consider for a bit here not even going for switch advantage, but then I realized that just in case they have a grass type in the back, right? Typically the opponent swaps in right away like that. That means that they have two strong answers in the back to my lead. So they may have a grass type and I would prefer not to have to, excuse me, deal with that. So I do look to end up putting both my shields down to get switch advantage here and leave the uh, Skarmory with as little HP as possible. Now uh, I, was, I was talking about substitutions for the Dragonair. Um, it really is very unique. You can use a non-shadow if you want to, but the shadow just does such a good job at being very strong and oppressive in its damage. And you can also run Aqua Tail if you like. There's plenty of battles here where I would have preferred to have Aqua Tail. So as far as consistency, I would go Body Slam, Aqua Tail. But Dragon Pulse, I had it on there from when we played back in the Retro Cup. And I didn't change it. And I just used it. And it did well. So we're gonna. I'm just going to go with that set. But if you want to change the save swap, you, know, you can use something like Sableye. Um, or another flyer, perhaps you want to use Mandibuzz or Talonflame is a very strong option there. Um, you just want something that's going to draw out that steel type, right? And also, speaking of steel types, I don't know where all the damn Feral Thorns have come from. I have seen so many. I, they must be like trying to counter the, the grass, or they're trying to counter the, uh, the Mud Boy Skarmory Core or something. Um... So, opponent's got that in the back, and Dragonair, because it's resisting that grass damage, I'm just going to be able to fire that Dragon Pulse off, has actually been so huge. Now I'm going to be able to get to this Mud Bomb here, take out the opponent's Lantern. This is pretty much going to steal the game here, as, uh, yeah, so they did have a grass type in the back. The thing with this team is that when you have good alignment, try to keep it right you got lantern on the lead against your whiskash keep that don't let dragonair you know don't, don't don't let skarmory have a chance at getting stuck against that lantern right you want to make sure that whatever you do you're trying to keep that good alignment so that you can make the most out of it right i mean sometimes you'll see the opponent might get uh scared and stay in if they have a bad matchup in the back so i i immediately see okay my whiskash is probably going to be useful here but i let it go and then I immediately swap on my Dragonair, and I almost get the Snipe down. My opponent does come up with an Azumarill here. I'm glad I do have the Body Slam, and I time my move terribly. And the thing with Dragonair is that even though it's a Dragon against a Fairy type, if I have 2-1 to one shields, I can still win this matchup. And because my opponent has a Dragonair with almost no energy in the back, 
with whatever else is back there, right? I don't know what they have in the back. They just have an Azumarill. At this point, I recognize that if they have a Lantern, I probably lose. But I'm going to look to try and keep my Dragonair healthy so that it can continue to go through whatever's in the back, right? So I'm going to get to two, nearly two Body Slams here, and I'm, I was trying to throw right before the bubble animation ended. But I got, miss, I got messed up with the animation, so I'm going to go immediately for the next Body Slam here, taking out the Azumarill, keeping my Dragonair somewhat healthy so that it can help get through whatever's in the back here. And the opponent has a Talon Flame. So because they have a Talon Flame, this is looking really, really bad. And I have to put, I have to, I have to draw out one of my my hat, my tricks out of my hat here. So what I'm gonna do because I know that they have three, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for two wing attack or steel wings, and then wait the one turn. I don't know if you saw it, but I waited a turn to swap so that the opponent didn't catch me swapping right away. I catch the flame charge here, and I'm able to get them down within. Just almost there, dude. But is this flame charge? This flame charge is gonna hurt. But it's not enough, and the opponent tries to get the Dragonair snipe, and because the Talon Flame takes five turns to get to an Incinerate, I take that game. I don't know. I mean, I would have been able to farm down the Talon Flame anyway, and then Dragonair was one move away, so I was going to be okay there either way, but that was extremely close, dude. <laughs> like, no way. So we get a Charge Bug on the lead. This is a pretty good lead. Both Dragonair and Whiskash do well here. Um, but you'll actually see, this is not as good of a matchup for Whiskash as you think it would be, despite the opponent being an Electric type. Those X Scissors do hit fairly hard, and the opponent gets to moves, on, I, I would honestly say, as quick as Whiskash does on average. Because they get every every um, every two, they go three two two for the X Scissor, so that's pretty quick, right? So I'm gonna throw the Scald here at the Umbreon. I was kind of hoping for an attack debuff, but I don't get it. So I'm gonna come in with my Skarmory here to try and keep it away from the Charge Bug. And my my thinking here is that if I can get my Skarmory some energy, I can threaten the Charge Bug with a Sky Attack at this point because of how much lower the Whiskash was able to get it. And I'm honestly just banking and hoping that Dragonair is going to be able to clean up in the back here. That's kind of the whole whole point here. That now that I've got the Skarmory on the field, now at this point I just need to be able to commit my Dragonite, or my Dragonair rather, sorry, to be able to finish this matchup off. So I'm going to go for the Sky Attack here. My opponent, I think they over farmed a little bit there. So I'm going to go for the Sky Attack and they're going to let it go. They're also saving two shields. They got their Charger Bug here. I immediately swap in my Dragonair, but take a little too long to do so. Um because of the steel wings going off. So my opponent is going to get the extra, so they will get my first shield, and they have a shield advantage, but they also have a whisk cache. So this looks bad because I only have one shield left, but I know that I can live one mud bomb here, and so I let it go. I'm going to save my shield for the other one, throw this body slam. I'm going to get both shields here, and the opponent only has mud bomb. And if you'll notice, both of my Pokemon, while they aren't necessarily healthy, they definitely have enough. They have about this much HP on all of them right now. So they could certainly live um, so they could certainly live a few moves here. So I'm going to go for this Body Slam once again. I'm going to look to try and get their final shield. And then also, I mean, if I can catch or I can throw, I immediately swap because I feel like the opponent may have wanted to throw right away. It's just a gut feeling. Um, so I get the energy off of them. They get a little bit more of a... Uh, or the Charger Book comes in to get the farm down. And now... I come in with my Whisk Ash to get to the move before they do, hopefully, but unfortunately not able to do so. But we were able to do enough damage to the Charge Bug where the Dragon Breaths from Dragonair will KO before they can get their Volt Switch through. And now we just throw the Body Slam into the Whisk Ash and take the win. And that, I honestly didn't think I was going to win that game, but we just pulled it off because Dragonair is just OP. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, getting into our next game here. We're going to have an Alolan Marowak on the lead. So this is a good lead for us because we've got Dragonair and Whiskash to deal with this thing. And the opponent is staying in, which means they may be core broken in the back. So the opponent now swaps in a Feral Thorn. And this is very awkward for me because even though Dragonair resists the grass and electric move set that Feral Thorn typically carries, it also, it's steel. It's resisting pretty much all of my damage. So I do have to do some damage. Mud Bombs do resist, or uh, do neutral damage because of the grass and the steel typing combining to make it neutral. So I'm going to be able to come in with Dragonair, survive two Power Whips, and get a quite a nice farm down here. I may go for a charge move depending on how I'm feeling about it, but now that the opponent's thrown right away, um, I can probably see if I can farm down here. I'm getting pretty low. Uh, but I'm going to risk it for that biscuit, as they say, and I'm going to go for the Dragon Pulse as soon as the opponent comes back in, which they come in with a Lantern because they didn't want the Alolan Marowak to eat the Aqua Tails. But you know what we get from that? We get a Dragon Pulse to land, baby! And now they come in with the Marowak, and my Whiskash basically beats the rest of this team. However, 
Skarmory loses to the rest of this team. So I have to be very careful about the way I do this. So I'm going to go for a good timing here. The opponent threw Shadow Ball, which means they're probably Shadow Bone. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Scald here, just aim for that shield and get the attack drop. But the opponent lets it go, and so I immediately swap in Skarmory. But my initial thinking was I'm going to swap in my Skarmory after they shield. I figured they were going to shield that. So I was a little too quick on the draw there. Uh, but I come up with my Skarmory because at this point, my Whiskash is healthy enough that I can easily tank moves. My opponent kind of has to shield at this point, even though my Steel Wings are doing like one damage. Those Sky Attacks and Brave Birds do threaten some HP here, and the opponent can farm me down here. Uh, but I'm going to go for the Brave Bird so I can give them a little bit less farm. And then my Whiskash should be able to come in and just get to a move, but the opponent lets it go thinking it's a Sky Attack, and that's a good game. I was certainly going to get to that mud bomb regardless, so we're good. All right, we got a Galvantula in the lead, another good lead, but I have, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I misplay this game. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say it right now um, because I forget. First of all, I see MP. That's a big no-no. The second thing here is that I rem I, I've i seen on Twitter, right, Eastside Pastor, I think, is uh, running Energy Ball Galvantula, and that struck fear into my brain during this game. I'm thinking, what if they have Energy Ball? But then someone in my chat told me Energy Ball was four, and I feel like an idiot. So, yeah, I, I feel like a dunce at this point, and uh, I come in with my dragon air to try and catch said energy ball, and they, call, they go for a lunge, and it's at this point I find out that it's actually four. So now they come in with a Bastidon, which is also awful. This person is completely weak to ground. That's why they didn't swap out of the... Uh, the Galvantula. Not that Galvantula often does, but this person apparently looks to be playing teams very strong to Skarmory, right? They don't want to deal with Skarmory, which is completely understandable. Skarmory being number one on the uh, on the rankings now makes it a very prime target for a lot of people to build triple weak, or triple strong to it, rather. I'm going for as good timing as I possibly can here, loading up on as much energy as I can so that I can deal with the Galvantula if it decides to come back in after this match. I'm going to go for one Mud Bomb. I'm going to go for... I was going to go for a little bit more. I didn't realize they were only one away from their move. So, shame on me. I have to shield this at the last second, but the opponent pops him with a Trevenant. I load up on energy, and I'm going to give Skarm the time it needs to do something. I'm going to hopefully get this Sky Attack off. The opponent fires off energy, and I expect him to farm me down after the Shadow Ball goes through. Um, so, I go for the Sky Attack immediately, and then I'm going to look to try. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to get to another one here, but I'm going to try to. Um, so, Sky Attack is coming up. My opponent throws energy here, which is huge. They must not know the Steel Wing counts for Sky Attack and thought that I was close to a move, and so they wanted to throw that Shadow Ball. So now Whiskash is going to go for a Scald, and even though this damage is all resisted, look at how much damage it's going to do. We're going to go for the Mud Bomb right away. I could have farmed maybe one or two more, but I didn't want to risk getting hit with a Seed Bomb at some point. So Mud Bomb is going to take out the Trevenant, and then we're going to be able to get to the Galvantula. I'm looking for that farm down to Mud Bomb, but the opponent lives with one HP and a Dream. And I'm not able to get the farm down to get the Bastion down off the board. So I'm going to take the loss here. I probably could have played that better, though, I'm going to be honest. But the opponent played very well. I mean, me also not knowing the counts for Chalf was really bad. Opponent's got a Skarm on the lead. This is pretty good for Whiskash. Opponent swaps into a Whiskash of their own. And I bring in my uh, Dragonair to start getting the uh, Whiskash down low. And I'm going to probably try to make sure I win Switch here just because Whiskash is a good matchup for the Skarmory. And because the opponent swapped in a Whiskash, I'm going to assume they probably got a, uh, a Swampert or something in the back. Now, um... For those of you who are still here, I appreciate it. And just so you know, I am doing a lesson on the 19th of December, all centered around team building and some of team reading as well. So if you're wondering why I knew that there was maybe a Swampert or something in the back here, um, very good opportunity for you to get into that lesson. Uh, I'll put a link in the description and the pinned comment for you to check it out. You can buy a seat and uh, attend the event. And if for some reason due to time zones you can't attend, um, just reach out to me privately on Discord. I'll save a recording and I'll send it to you if you're able to purchase a seat for the event. Uh, opponent's got a Cray Dilly though and I come in with Skarmory. So I was actually wrong about it, but it was a very safe bet, I feel like, for me to think that they had a, a Mud Boy back there based on their the way that they were playing. So Cray Dilly though, absolutely great core breaker this season and home slice henry's all over it and i kind of agree with him it feels very strong unfortunately whenever i tried to use it it just kind of got slapped by toxic broken things but anyway though we we're able to do super effective damage with the steel wings here which really overwhelms the credilly and the opponent basically has to go for energy here i will shield this up because the credilly is nearly gone and i should be able to get 
at least the next shield off of them with a sky attack or farm them down opponent decides to swap out to try and catch what could be a sky attack on their own skarmy which is a very good play by them but i go for the brave bird here and i should be able to get to two mud bombs here the opponent's gonna have to shield something skarmory is still healthy enough to handle whatever's in the back uh, or the rest of the uh, Cordelia, rather. But I'm going to go for the Mud Bomb here with good timing. And then my opponent basically has to throw or shield. And at that point, they're within one... Um they're within range of one uh, steel wing, so they have to throw here, or they go, or they're going to go down anyway. And then uh, that's going to take out my whisk cash, and that's a good game there. Well played to my opponent. But Skarmory is just really, really dominant right now in good matchups with uh, with that Steel Wing. Even against Cradilly, it was that was really good. So, seeing another Dragonair in the lead, I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. I'm going to throw the Mud Bomb to either chip or get a shield. And then if I chip, I'm going to swap to Dragonair to get the... Uh, to, after they throw some energy here, because I don't want them to throw energy into my Dragonair and force me to shield first. And right after this move now is what I'll do, is I'll go into my Dragonair and hope to get the snipe down, which I do, the opponent unable to react in time, or they were willing to let it go down, one of the two. Um, but the fact that they're waiting to swap in means they may have been taken by surprise here, and they have to come in with their superior, which is fine with me, because superior is absolutely not an answer to dragons. So that, once again, feels to me like they don't have an answer in the back. Plus, I've already got the ability to line my Skarmory up against this superior, so I'm totally fine with letting this go. My opponent goes for the Aerial Ace. A Frenzy Plant would do slightly more damage in this situation. Um, but Aerial Ace is a little bit less energy, so it makes sense either way. Uh, gonna, opponent's gonna shield the Body Slam. I have two shields, and my opponent is forced to swap out into their Lantern. At this point, the game is set and sealed. Whiskash gets on the, uh, on the Lantern here, and then Skarmory is in to be able to take out whatever's left of the, uh, the superior here and even though my whisk cash has almost no hp left doesn't matter i have two shields i get to these mud bombs no matter what i could even save the shield for my skarmory and farm down if i want to but i'm not going to be that kind of person i do want to at least finish this game up here so i'm going to farm up as much as i can leave as little farm for the superior as possible just because that's a good practice to do if you don't want your opponent to get any farm but i'm able to swap on immediately go for the superior farm down and that's a good game well played Getting into the next battle here, we got Whisk Mirror on the lead, so we got to stay in for a bit here, uh, or at least I would think I would, but I guess at this point what I was trying to do was I was trying to bait out their Skarmory uh, or something. Basically just trying to bait something out in the back. Now, the opponent's playing a very similar tactic to what I was doing, was throwing their Mud Bomb and dipping. Now, the opponent staying in this long may mean that they're either doing the same tactic that I was doing, or since they shield more like, they're actually afraid of Dragonair in the back. So I'm actually seeing value in my Dragonair now. I'm going to continue this matchup out because I would really rather not have my Skarmory aligned to the Whiskash because the Steel Wings are resisted and it takes a while for Skarmory to get some moves. I would just prefer not to have to deal with it. And now the opponent gives me shield advantage. And I'm going to take it. And at this point, what I'll do as well is I'll come up with my Whiskash and I'll start farming. And if I can farm down this whole Whiskash, that would be insane. And that's exactly what I'm looking to do. The opponent stays and throws energy. They're not swapping out. This is a perfect opportunity for me to get a ton of energy on my Whiskash. They're not swapping out still, but they're able to get to a Mud Bomb at the last second. So I have to make a decision. Do I shield? Yeah, I got a shield. I got to keep the Whiskash somewhat healthy. The opponent seems to not care for it. And then they come in with Altaria, and there's a Charger Bug in the back. So in retrospect, all I had to do was win switch, uh, you know, keep alignment against the opponent's team, right? All I had to do, honestly, was just um, throw the, or shield up the Dragonair and get the Mud Bomb, or the, oh man, I cannot think right now. Get the, get the, oh, excuse me for one moment. All I had to do was farm down with the Dragonair and then get the alignment. That was it. All right, so we get a really nice lead. We got a Bastion in the next game. And Mud, um, Metacham comes in. And at this point, because I've seen this team a million times over the last 20 seasons, I'm not 20 seasons, but 10 seasons, I'm going to get some chip with the uh, with the Whiskash because this is not an easy matchup for Dragonair. And I'm not actually sure how much damage an Ice Punch does off the top of my head. But I figured plus the counters, it might be enough to KO. And I would really like Switch Advantage here because Skarmory cannot see Bastion on at all. So I need Switch. Opponent Shields up as well. Uh, I assume that they've probably got a grass, usually a Shadow Victory Bell in the back. So um, I'm saving my Skarmory for that purpose. And the opponent having Metacham, they might be able to win in the two shields of Skarmory. I wasn't really willing to take that chance. So they're going to come back in with the Bastion. And once again, I really, really wish that I had Aquatel for this kind of situation. 
because Aqua Tail allows Dragonair to be a response to Steel types in most cases. So I'm farming all the way up, trying to see if my opponent will throw their energy, but they don't. Maybe they weren't even at the energy or at the move yet. I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna throw the Dragon Pulse because if I'm gonna do one move, it's gonna do more damage. And then Whiskash comes back in. Opponent will swap into the Victory Bell, and in comes my Skarmory, and I will farm this all the way down. And I'm not throwing any energy here. There's no reason to. I'm resisting everything. Even if it's a Shadow Victory Bell, their damage means absolutely nothing to me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and... No shield? Because I got Acid Spray. I don't have a shield anyway. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this farm down. I've got two moves loaded. And even though the Brave Birds are double resistant, I want you all to watch something here. Okay? Steel Wing makes Skarmory not absolutely awful into this matchup. Look at how low the Bastion is. Look at the damage from the Steel Wing is actually noticeable. So if you were to safe swap Skarmory and draw out a Bastion, for example, I guarantee you the matchup wouldn't be too bad. Now, I go for the Sky Attack here because I wasn't sure if I was going to make that Brave Bird. So I get the shield here. I come in with the Whiskash to make the combo play, and we're going to take out this Toxic Bastion team. Lickety split. Good game to the opponent. Get your sick out of your, 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 your sick Toxic team out of here and Stop playing Bastion on Victory Bell Core. Stop it. Get some help. But taking a 5-0 and a 3-2, and I played a few other sets really, really positive with this team. Had, had to manufacture some really crazy wins, uh, but it was an absolutely strong team, and I honestly feel like that this is a very dominant team. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Check out the stream tonight because this is Friday, baby, and it's going to be a stream tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. Probably a stream tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, and we're going to get back to it until I go on vacation in the, at the end of December. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.